came from Proverbs, and it was her favorite. And it was simply this, death and life from the power of the tongue. She used to say to me, now, Kimmy, never say anything negative aloud. Always speak positive words over your life, no matter what happens to you. The lesson for me was simply change my language to the positive. Another lesson she taught me were these wonderful bedtime stories that used to, she used to read to me before I fell asleep. One in particular was my favorite, and it was simply this. She said it like this. Kimmy, the Israelites wanted to get to their promised land, but in order to get there, they had to conquer this city called Jericho. It was a city fortified with really thick walls, and they were given some rather odd instructions, she said. First, they had to walk around that city wall once a day for six days. Then. They had to walk around that city wall seven times on the seventh day. And finally, and most importantly, she was they had to repeat more hours before they were. They could not just say one word. And then what happened on the seventh day, she said? The Israelites gave a great shout! And the walls of Jericho came tumbling down. The people could move forward, take on the city, and reach their destiny. The lesson for me was simply this. Until I reach my destiny, no complaining. <laughs> How many of you have actually only spoken positive words over your life and did not complain? <laughs> I asked my mother, why could those people not talk? And she, I can imagine walking around those circles and not talking. And she said, that's very easy, honey. Their leader knew that they would be negative and complain, just like your father. <laughs> just kidding, she said. No, like those ancestors of the Israelites. That's why they were told to be quiet. The next lesson I learned was in 1997, the very first job I had selling timeshares in the beautiful Cayman Islands. And boy, let me tell you guys, I was afraid of failing. I was so sick to my stomach. I heard every negative thought imaginable come into my mind. You don't know how to sell timeshare. Nobody's going to believe or buy from you. Other salespeople are much more qualified. And you got dark roots in your hair. <laughs> <laughs> You're right. My sales manager, Mac, Mike, approached me. He was a big, tall Georgia man with a face full of freckles. And this is what he said. Kimberly, I hope you like doing the conga dance, honey, because here at our resort, you're going to have to conga every Monday night with these guests, and you're going to have to lead the line. You know the dance. Dun, 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 You go around in circles with people behind you, and I had to lead all these people around the bar. So as I'm going around the bar, dun, 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 with these people behind me, all of a sudden, guess who I'm feeling like? I'm feeling like one of those Israelites. Walking around and around the city walls of Jericho. And that's when I had my epiphany that until I reached my dream, I would conga to the positive. You got it. What was my dream, you might ask? I wanted to sell $1 million of timeshare in under one year. I had heard a woman had never done that before at the resort. I made a decision. I wrote my goal on a piece of paper and I looked at it every day. Fast forward, all the salespeople are selling, except me. <laughs> I did sell one time share. I know what you all must be thinking. Oh, she really must be a dumb blonde. <laughs> <laughs> well, what did I continue to do? Conga? Awesome. You got it. Fast forward another month, still no sale. Now, about this time, people are laughing, talking about me behind my back. Especially one. There's always one, isn't there, ladies? <laughs> <laughs> and this one looked like Angelina Jolie on top of that. And they called her Sexy Sandy, a superstar sales girl. <laughs> <laughs> and this is what she said. Would you look at Blondie over there? She can't seem to sell any timeshare. Must be too much peroxide on her hair. <laughs> the only she thing she can do well is conga. <gasps> Those words were like daggers in my heart. <laughs> I was so hurt and humiliated. Do you remember when someone said something like that about you behind your back, how you felt? And then later on, to top it off, later on that night, my sales manager comes up to me and says, Kimberly, honey, I've got some good news and I got some bad news. 
But the good news is you don't ever have to leave this talking lot again. Tonight to last night. And bad news is we're canceling your work permit. You can't sell a darn thing. You got two weeks. <gasps> oh, I felt like a failure. A loser with a capital L. <laughs> <laughs> but guess what I continue to do, folks? Conga to the positive. As I'm going around that conga line, and I'm thinking about those, you know, what can I do? to bring the walls of my timeshare failure down. <laughs> and then I had that epiph another epiphany. <gasps> Jim Taylor! He was the top sales rep in the entire organization. Nobody could touch him. He was a short, chubby little man with loud color shirts with fish swimming all over him. He told a new joke every day. And I asked him, Jim, can you help me? I'm dying. He said, Kimberly, if you want to be as successful as me, you have got to do exactly what I tell you to do. I'll be happy to mentor you. I studied Jim Taylor like a book. And guess what? A miracle happened. In one week, I got my first sale. And then I started selling and selling and selling. And folks, in nine months flat, I achieved my million dollar sales goal. Wow. Thank you, Mama and Jim Taylor. <laughs> Matt, Mr. Contest Chair, fellow Toastmasters and guests, remember when life doesn't go your way, think of the, the points you learned today. Be quiet. Only speak positive words of your life. No complaining. And conga the positive until the walls of your Jericho come tumbling down. Mr. Contest Chair.